Hello, welcome to another Red9 demo. Um, I did promise previously that I was going to go through uh, more of both Studio Pack and Pro Pack and try and um, up the number of videos that we do. Um, and today we're going to be going through the track and stabilize functionality, and this is within Studio Pack. So if we open up Studio Pack here, Animate Toolkit, it's just there, this little section here. Um, now, back when we were, well, back when I was working at um, both Eurocom and Crytek and, um, and ultimately Dambusters, this functionality was probably hit more than any other button in any of the tool sets that we wrote, um, which is why it came into uh, Studio Pack and which is why it's still there. Um, and quite simply, it is a track or a stabilizer. It's two things in one. If you have a single object selected, it is a tracker. Uh, sorry, it's a stabilizer. If you have two objects selected, it is a tracker. And what do we mean by that? Well, let's have a quick look at this simple piece of mocap. Um, this is something may instantly. It, it, there is now a match transforms in May, which will do it on a single object, but it doesn't do it over time. Um, we don't use this functionality, we don't use this code, but it is um, it is starting to make its way into May, which is good to see. So anyway, single object selected. And in single mode, it is a stabilizer. So let's have a look at this. If we look at this foot, you can see as it lands, there's a bit of an inflection going on there, and we want to get rid of that. So um, what you could do is you could go into the graph editor and you could flap the keys, which is nice and easy. The problem is if you've got lots of animation layers going up and you might be having an animation layer um, which is correcting something else and you might have over keys on objects that are the parent of this object that you, you know, it makes it difficult to actually just go in and flatten keys. This is a far easier way of doing it. Uh, now you'll notice we have quite a few options on this. Step is simply the frame step that we're going to do each time we iterate. Um, and that's fairly obvious when you <laughs> see what we're about to do. Um, we can um, we can track or stabilize on both rotates and translates, either or, and we can turn those off, and we can also do it over time. So I'm gonna take the time off for the time being. Usually when I'm doing a stabilizer, I'll take it off, and I'll do it frame by frame. So what I'm gonna do is we find a frame where it lands, and we're happy with, say, that one there, and I'm just gonna walk forward until, oh, it's come off, that's a few frames, so he lands, it's now stabilized, rock solid, and then we're back into the animation. So stabilizing things is dead easy. Um, but I said it was a track and stabilizer. Um, so the, the stabilizer is if two objects are selected. So let's do something really simple. I'll do this demo time in, time out. I'm going to put a ball in his hand. Anyone seen me do this stuff? Sorry, it's boring, but hey, there we go. Um, so the first object we select is the master, the one that's that's actually we want to match to, and the second object is the object we want to drop the keys on. And first thing first is I'm going to use our snap. That's our snap functionality. Um, if you click on there, there is snap translates and snap rotates, which are separate. Same functionality as that effectively. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just, we'll grab that ball, we'll just move it so it's in his hand. Dink, something like that. That's close enough ish and what we're going to do is we'll select the wrist we'll select the ball and we're going to do the stable uh, the, the um, tracker now that I can go through frame by frame obviously it's a bit tedious if it's a long sequence so we'll use the time range now as with anything in both studio pack and pro pack whenever we say time range if you've got nothing highlighted in the time range it is this full range that we have here if I shift select in the time range that's the time range, okay? So that's a constant across anything that we do. So what you see is he picks the ball up and away he goes. Now that's dead easy. Um, the best part of this is that what I've seen um, an awful lot of people doing, particularly when we were at Crytek doing some of those bigger, bigger cutscenes for Homefront, the guys would put all the cutscenes together, they'd have all the interactions with the multiple characters, you know, characters put their hands on tables, picking things up, um, grabbing each other by the, you know, like by the lapels and threatening or whatever it was, they won't worry about any of that. They do all of the base animation, they finish the blocking, finish their animation, and then they do a final pass of the stabilizer and the tracker and putting all those contact points in place. Because it saves having to build connections with constraints and switching constraints, or you know, a lot of animators use locators and they'll track a locator and then they'll constrain to a locator and you know, all of these things. It all goes away. So anyway, we've just put that in his hand, dead easy. If we want to put it in the other hand, for example, I can just select that object, select the ball, we'll snap it into place, we'll grab the ball, stick it where it needs to be. One, two, and uh, let's just do a couple of frames. And we can go backwards as well. 
So if we want to replace all of the stuff that we've just done and we go backwards, it's now in that hand. Really, really easy stuff. There is a sequence in this piece, which is probably a good use for this, where he's meant to be putting his hands on his thighs, just there. If we grab this, let's have a look, how we look at this. Let's say we want to actually track that properly. Well, uh, first thing we need is something to track to, so what I'll do is I'll just switch this system over to FK. Let's just do that, switch to FK, yes, bosh. Okay, so now we have a thigh controller, just there. And we'll find a part where we want to put the hands down, somewhere around there. Cut all the keys that are currently in it. Cut, let's find a frame, somewhere around there. Position the hand where we actually want it, not where the mocap's currently driving it, which is awful. Um, I don't know, something like that. It's not the best, but hey, you know, it's only a demo. Let's say that's where we want it. So we'll grab the grab the thigh, grab the controller, and we'll just oh, excuse me, do that. Let's do that. Let's put a key in that. Okay. Just do it with some time. Over time range, bash. And that's it, done. Uh, that's not it. Why is that not? Oh, it's because I didn't track it. <laughs> I stabilised it, excuse me. Got the two objects, that's what we wanted to do. Those two. 107 forwards. Gosh, there we go. And that's then tracked over it. So it's a really easy way of correcting interactions with objects. Um, but I've got a better example of that. Let me just pause the video for a sec while I open the other. So this is a really, really old demo I did. I way 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 back when we first when I first wrote this stuff um, and you can see it's just a cube going over a series of conveyor belts and moving around a series of objects now that as a piece of animation if you were doing that with constraints you'd constrain you know the the cube to the piston you then have to turn that constraint off drive it to something like this manage that constraint turn that off manage that constraint ah, -da 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 -da. so you've got lots of constraints but then at this point we have no transform, that's actually a blend shape that I've just pushed on there, so that becomes even more complicated. But with a tool, it's really easy. If I just delete all of the keys off this object, where am I going? Uh, edit, keys, cut keys. Let's just do it really quickly. So, piston, cube. Remember, piston is the one that's animated, cube is the one we want to push the data to. And let's see, we want to be, I don't know, somewhere about there probably. Time range, every frame, done. Okay, that's it, track to the piston, and then we want to pick up one of those objects here, and we'll just track it to there, like that. Okay, now the issue there obviously is this one's got to rotate in it, and it's pushed it too far, but what we can do is we just pick another object, take that off, and we just bump it around. This is the beauty about this, it's, you, you know, there's no set of constraints, it's just you pick an object that's moving how you want it to do, and let it do it. Uh, just carry on doing that. That'll do. Okay. Wait for this thing to come round. Well, that's really easy, that one. It's just somewhere around there. It's going to give it a little bit of a push by the look of it, which is fine. Somewhere around there. Over time. Bang. Done. See how quick it is as well? Over it goes. Go away. <laughs> uh, pick an object on here. That one to that one. Again, do it over some time. Probably there, bang. You can see just how quick this thing is at building sequences up. And like I say, it's perfect for character interaction. Uh, but this one is just a bit of a quick demo. Okay, so let's do it over there. Right, so we're at the point where we have no more transforms, okay? This is all transform driven, and it's just snapping and matching transforms. This is a blend shape, okay? And actually what we want to do is we want to track the blend shape, we want to track this top surface, this, tra this top poly. Um, well, this will also do that. So what we're going to do is we find a place where we're happy, somewhere around there. Right click on the object, and we're going to go into multi-select mode in there, which allows you to select objects and faces and verts and uh, edges. And we'll select that top poly. We'll shift select the object, so I've got a uh, a face and a poly select, sorry, a face and an object selected. Find a place where you want to do this thing. From there, on, well, yeah, we'll do from there onwards. I would go time track. And you see that is also then tracking this poly face.
So it will track multiple objects, it'll track multiple surfaces. Um, it's perfect for, for finalizing objects. You know, like I say, these, these, these hard parts where you've got characters leaning on tables and you want to bolt those wrists down, um, picking objects up, all of the stuff that actually, I know an awful lot of animators struggle with the complexities of switching constraints and things on and off. It just gets rid of all that. Um, anyway, I hope you found that's useful. Uh, like I say, this is in Studio Pack. Um, so, you know, ping us if you need help. Um, and we'll go through more probably next week. Thanks very much. Bye.